Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Parks and Rec Advisory Committee meeting. Today is April 17, 2023. We do have a quorum, and I call this meeting to order. The first uh, order of business is I need a motion and a second for the approval from the last meeting. Motion to approve. I second. Motion from Laura Davison and a second from our Chucky boy down here. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, we'll get started right out. We have a young lady here with us, uh, Michaela Brooks. And Michaela's gonna come up to the podium. You come right on up there, Michaela. And her mom. And for the record, because you are on TV, I need uh, I need you to state your name and your address. Okay. Uh, my name is Michaela Brooks, and I live at 442 Randall Way. All right. Tell us what you got going on, Michaela. Um, well, I'm with the Girl Scouts of Middle Tennessee, and I'm Troop 676. And um, I would like to complete my Civil War Award at one of your dog parks. And the Civil Award is the highest award a Girl Scout cadet can earn. And after that, I will complete my Gold Award. And I would like to put um, a grab and go dog box at the dog park for little dogs and big dogs. A grab and hold? A grab and go. Grab and go. Mm -hmm. Okay, I know that I have several questions about it, but I'm going to let my board members ask you any questions they may have first. Okay. What's a grab and go? I was gonna um, ask. So <laughs> I didn't figure it out. That was my question. It's basically gonna be a box of like treats or toys or like dog bowls at the park. And then when you're when you bring your dog to the park, if you would like to use one of the the, the toys, you can just play with it and then put it back when you leave. And then the bags of treats, you'll just use it if you're like teaching your dogs tricks or something, you can give them a treat from out the bag. That's wonderful. That's a good idea. Yeah. So I'll be the uh, I'll be the elephant in the room because it is a city entity. Uh, you said food or toys, one or the other. Oh, it'll be both of them. Huh? It'll be both of them. Both of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is this <laughs> is this for what? time period as far as it's not going to be ongoing is it yeah it's going to be ongoing so just ongoing because mm -hmm. you know dr isaac i don't know where y'all take your pet but dr isaac that uh, runs good samaritan furnishes the uh, bags and all of that stuff for the dog park and uh, what kind of goodies is it as far as the brand or um, does it vary? It, it varies. It could be any type of tree, but it's just going to be one of the, the small bags. So here's the issue, and David, <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong. You can jump in. Uh, anytime that we have anything that comes through the city like this, it's got to be cleared by our city administrator, and then it has to be cleared by our city attorney to make sure that there's no kind of liability or anything because if you give a goodie to a dog that's maybe had a special thing, special some kind of special food or something, they get sick, then the city gets blamed. But David and I talked about it and we wanted to make sure that there was some waivers, some signs that were put up that owners, your own discretion, things like that. I think the whole board agrees this is a wonderful idea. I love it, especially pet owners. And I know Rick's a big pet owner, Laura. Uh, so I think it's a great idea. And regardless of what we think, we have to present it to those other two people I just named. So I don't want to give you a false sense of encouragement because I think it's a great idea. David, am I missing anything? No, and I, I think it's an awesome idea also. I think the best, like your presentation tonight, 
if you guys could put that in writing and give us something to present um, just so the city attorney could look at it to make sure if, if there is any, any liability on the city's issue. I think things they're going to be looking at is if like somebody's dog may have an allergic reaction to a dog treat or um, dog treats exposed to the weather because I don't know present what kind of enclosure it's going to be in also whether it's going to be weather tight you know I don't, I don't know if we want to like dog treats get exposed to the weather or rain and then mildew and somebody comes up and their dog eats them so those are avenues that we're going to have to explore and and I would just assume uh, I would just say that put a presentation together with those facts in it because this is something that your name, if, I, if I'm understanding right, your name would be tied to that also on a plaque saying that this was your um, silver award project. Um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. And, you know, we have seen things throughout the city before that the Boy Scouts have done as their Eagle Scout project. So hopefully it'll work out. Um, as far as do you have any idea or or illustration of what your grab and go would look like? Um, I don't have a drawing with me, but it's like one of those um, containers that you keep outside, but the lid just like flips up. And then when you fill it back down, it like seals a little bit. So would you just, you'd have just one central or would you have one on both sides I or one, one in the on middle? Both sides. One on both sides? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think that's, you know, um, put, put your ideas on paper and we will present them. You can either, we'll give you our contact information or you guys have Steve's, the vice mayor's contact information, get in touch with him. And when you get that hammered out, present it to us and we'll just make sure there's no liability on the city side. Um, so Michaela, my next question is, is where'd you come up with this idea? Um, I really just like helping people or living things in general, and I have two dogs, so that's just where it came from. You're pretty proud of her, aren't you, Mom and Dad? I am. Should be. <laughs> I met her a few years ago. She's grown up a lot since I've seen her. But as you can see, because it is city <clears throat> stuff, things don't, you, you would think things would go, you know, just smooth as silk, but, but uh, once this is put together, mm -hmm. and uh, you can either call me or whoever, Jason, David, and then that's something that we would have to turn over to higher up, and then they would make the final decision. Mm -hmm. But I think, you, I think we all agree, Michaela, it's a great idea. You're a super young lady, and we appreciate you coming before us and letting us know. One more question, two more words. Who, who would uh, pay for the treats and then who would stock them? Um, that was going to be my question. Uh, I would pay for the treats and then I would like restock them like every Saturday or Sunday. Okay. Right. I assume Keep you would take donations for yeah, it? Take donations. Oh, yeah. And um, at places where like we usually go, like at Kroger or Taekwondo, I'll put a donations box so I won't have to pay for all the food or the treats. That's great, because I know people are people are crazy about their pets, and they will make, you know, good, nice donations. So your your idea is great. Uh, your silver, what is it called? Silver. Uh, silver award. Silver award. Silver award. So, is that something you need to do? Something that's volunteer type wise to in order to move up? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's called a take action project. So take she has action. to do so many hours on the project in order to earn it. Okay, cool. All right, any more questions from the staff or the members? I'd just like to say something. I have a granddaughter in Illinois that done the silver and then done a gold project. And I admire you taking the time to do that because it's not easy. Thanks. And it is time consuming. <laughs> Yeah, I'd definitely love to see it work out. You know, any mm -hmm. any responsible pet owner is going to know if their dog has a reaction mm -hmm. or that's something that they don't want to give them. And it may be something just as easy as us putting up a sign, you know, putting that responsibility on the pet owner. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I'd like to see it work out. I think it'd get a lot of play. Yeah. 
do they make those, uh, Mom, you may know, do, do they make those kind of boxes that you can raise up, get one out, and it automatically close by itself? Mm -hmm. um, so no rain or anything can get in it? Mm, no, not that I've seen yet. Um, we have been researching and we have a patio deck box. Um, we can open it, but it doesn't close by itself. You definitely have to close it. Because like David was saying, if, uh, you know, if water got in it, it would they'd be wet and moldy and soft. And well, on our deck, it's in all kind of weather and we haven't had any problem with anything inside of it getting wet or anything. All right. There's several options, I think, in mm -hmm. those type of bo bo containers. Yes. All right. All right. Well, ladies, thank you very much. And Michaela, you are a very special young lady. Thank you for coming up here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, who is this? Andrew with the Spring Ball League? Sure. So we have the uh, Spring Ball League grand home opening <laughs> this past Saturday. Uh, went out with uh, great success. Miss Julia had everything running on time. All the kids were in their little uniforms, all dressed up excited. Um, we probably had the best first pitch we've ever had up there at the park with our vice mayor. Hey, there. I got it to him. <laughs> but yeah, everything went great. Um, didn't really hear no complaints. Everything, concessions were moving smoothly. So as far as on our side, from what I see, everything's going great compared to what we've had in the past. Now, one of the things, Andrew, David, y'all, uh, me and Julia talked about it. She brought it up. I told her to wait until after Saturday, get through Saturday. But I felt like she needed to send a text message out to all of her coaches and remind them about dogs and smoking and stuff like that in the park. Okay. Yeah, we, we can definitely reach out and follow up with her on that. You know, are they hurting anything? That's not the point. Yeah, because there is signage posted. There's signs. There and, you know, and you know, safety the, and security of the children. Absolutely, that, that's the main thing we're concerned about. But but I'm I agree. It from I was up there for several hours. I know Laura was up there a lot, and Rick, and uh, it was good because it's been a long time coming. I heard. Zero complaints all day. Zero. It was excellent opening day. It I was, was really surprised yeah. to see kids actually had uniforms. I didn't know leagues could pull that off anymore. <laughs> and most of them paid and had their names. Um, i tell you what, I'm very impressed. It's what we have been missing. That's probably an element of the department that has been lacking is that ball league. It's been a thorn in our side. Um, she was on time. She's very organized. Um, yeah. Very impressive. Um, just want to see it continue to grow. We've I went. Already, uh, we've already got pictures scheduled for yeah. next Saturday. Yeah. We have a full schedule of ten games already planned out. She has a backup plan for rainout days. Um, we are very excited. The way this league is going, could Agreed. could not have done any better if I'd done it myself. Concession stand had someone taking the money, someone running to get the stuff, handing it to the server, and then two people cooking. And, and it was just, you know, it was good. Better than McDonald's. It was cash and credit. Yeah, it was, uh, everything looked good. I, you know, uh, the bathrooms, Andrew, your staff, or David, whoever, the bathrooms were clean, freshly painted. Everything looked great. The fields looked awesome. So hopefully, knock on wood, we can. Uh, All the scoreboards worked. Andrew has worn himself to death over the scoreboards. <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing I noticed when I walked out there is how good the fields looked. Y'all did a terrific job on that. Yeah, it's amazing. Absolutely. We haven't had scoreboards in quite a few years and it, it was nice to see it operate like it should and that's the way that this board has envisioned it with issues we've had over the years it was absolutely perfect on Saturday 
Absolutely perfect. Are we trying to get the rest of the speakers working? We are. I mean, it's, that's a work in progress as far as the budget, but that is the goal for the future. So. Yeah, I don't think it. I I don't think it that you could question anybody that was involved in the league previously and that was involved Saturday, and they couldn't definitely see a difference of night and day. Totally two different directions. I mean, you had an opening day on a Saturday. That in itself was amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not a Wednesday at Not a Wednesday five. Evening. Yeah. Yeah, that was, I, was, I didn't quite get that. And I appreciate, let me say that. I appreciate every single person that has tried to run the league here. I know everyone went into it with the best of intentions for these children. And there's just um, trial and error. And I think um, we, might have, we might have hit a home run with this league. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if we go through this season, like Saturday, fall ball will be good. But next spring, we will add 100 kids. That's the goal. Grow the league. All right, any more comments about the Spring Ball League? The next thing up is Movie in the Park. All right, uh, Movie in the Park is scheduled for Friday, April 28th, and we are showing Clifford the Big Red Dog. That is a movie we had from a rain out last year that we carried over to this year, and we will have concessions available. Um, I need to look and see what time sunset is to see I think we were thinking about 7 15 7 30 for the movie to start and gates will open around six o'clock is the big blow up thing in good shape and ready to go um it is in good shape yes just pray we don't have any weather right. issues or wind yeah it's, it's the wind. You all will make David stay home. There won't be no problem. He's, well, he's actually, I'm on vacation he's that vacation. So oh, well, then <laughs> it'll be, like it's a go. Year, then. <laughs> then it'll be great weather. As far as concessions on that, I've talked to Miss Julia. If she can get enough staff together, she's going to do the concessions for that night to help support the league. I will be there to help her as well. Any comments? All right. How is the block party touch a truck going, Kathy? It's going good. Um, it's May 13th, 11 to 4. Um, BJ's Wholesale has uh, decided to sponsor the event this year. So that's nice that we have a sponsor for it. Um, as of now, we've got 15 registered displays in the touch a truck and about 30 other vendors that'll be there with some family-friendly activities that we'll have as well. May what? 13th. May 13th. May 13th. 11 to 4. Or Mother's Day. Will you send me that form if I need to fill yeah. something out? And then, um, right in that note, uh, we're advertising it on the Buzz and Jack FM, and we're going to do flyers to the schools like we did for the father-daughter dance. Yeah. You say you need a copy of the insurance? I need a copy, yes. Any commercial vehicle, any vehicle or equipment entered will have to show proof of insurance, whether it be commercial or private. So we'll need a copy of that. Um, so, and we've got the little vests and hats for the kids again this year, which we've almost tripled up on that number. So that we have plenty. How many people do we have last year for Touch the Truck? I don't remember. How many displays? How many kids we think showed um, up? I mean, we, I think we bought 150 vests and we ran out. So um, maybe two, 250 kids last year. They looked really cool running around with yeah. their little yeah. vest and hat. I know my grandson liked it. Do you have the um, registration link up on your... Page it is. It's on. We've shared it on Facebook. There, you can get to it from the web page. Um, but yeah, there's a link. It's the block party link, and there's registrations for both being a vendor at the block party and the touch of truck displays. Okay. I think um, Fox 100 was going to put a truck in there, and then we were going to get coloring pages and crayons to pass out. Oh, awesome. As well. Okay. Yeah. 
That'll be great. So, any questions? What time set up? Um, set up, I mean, it's 11 to 4, so any sort of display probably you can show up around 9.30. Anybody who registers will get an email from me the week before that gives them a, a vendor map or a display map so that it'll give setup times and it'll direct people exactly where to go when they show up. And we'll, of course, we'll have staff down there helping guide people to their spots as well. So. And uh, <coughs> will there be food? Oh, yeah. We've got food vendors and other types of vendors as well. That's all you worry Us. about is food. Yeah, we got food trucks. <laughs> so we've got. Well, there's food. people at home. Hopefully, when they watch this on YouTube, they'll see this and they'll yeah. they're sitting there going, "Somebody ask about food trucks." So. <laughs> and um, also, if you go to our webpage for the block party, we've listed the vendors that have registered. So it'll give a list of the food vendors, the other vendors, the displays that have registered, and the activities that we're offering. So all mm -hmm. the information is on that webpage. To the Parks and Rec. Facebook page? Um, not the Facebook page. If you go to LavernTN.gov, there's a community tab. Right. And then the block party will have an event page, and on that page is where all the links are and all the information. Gotcha. That's always, that was a fun time last year. Yeah. Any questions about this, folks? All right, we'll move on to the next big event, 4th of July. All right, um, 4th of July is on the 4th of July. Um, Bueller Band is the band that's gonna be performing this year. Nope. That Bueller Band, they're an 80s cover band. What day is that on? That, uh, what day of the week? Well, Tuesday. <coughs> Tuesday, I hadn't looked at my calendar that far ahead. And that one will have um, food and snack vendors at that event as well. And we'll have uh, the spider jump. We'll she be made there. sure she got that in there, didn't she? Yes. Before yes. I ask. Yes, sir. <laughs> so we're going to have uh, 4th of July. We're going to have uh, big blow-ups, music. Um, we'll have uh, the music and then the food trucks, <laughs> and we'll have some activities. I don't necessarily think it'll be inflatables. Okay. Inflatables are... They're hard to man. We, we rely on volunteers. And with the 4th of July event, everybody's on vacation. That's one of the events that's harder to get any volunteers for. Hard to get them kids away from it, too, when it starts getting dark. Yes. Any questions? All right, now my favorite, where I can get out there and run, is the Howl at the Moon. <laughs> All right, Howl at the Moon this year is August 11th at 8 p.m. Uh, registrations uh, hopefully opening soon. I emailed the uh, Rabbit Row Racing person the information last week. So as soon as he gets his link open, we'll go ahead and open our side so people can start registering. Um, Check-ins at 6.30 and the race will be at 8 o'clock. What's the cost going to be? Um, early registration up until July 28th is $30. From July 29th through August 10th is 35 And then the day of the race is 40 Same uh, path as last year? Correct. Yes. Starting at the park? and Right. Well, registrations will be at Pavilion B, and then the race itself will start at that back parking lot behind, <clears throat> that backs up to the condos. Okay. <clears throat> Any more questions? I see the carnival has made the agenda, so. Yes, we got the contract today. So um, this year's carnival will be August 24th through the 27th. And weeknights will be from five to 10, and then weekends is noon to 10. Same one? It is the same one, yes. Have they added anything? Um, no, I mean, the contract pretty much is generic. It's the same contract from last year, so I anticipate the exact same rides coming. Um, and then the food, the food um, concessions are the same as last year. So he, did, he added Sunday this year. Last year it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This year they've added Sunday into the contract.
Any questions? Last but certainly not least is the fall festival. Mm -hmm. Seems like we talk about this in January and it's here before we know it. And now it's already May almost. And um, fall festival's on here just because we're starting to work on the bands. And we have reached out to the Prince Experience to get a Prince cover band. So we're currently working on a contract with that band. It's not confirmed yet. We're still in the beginning stages. Is that going to be for Friday night that opening? Be for Friday, correct. So this year the concert will be September 15th, that Friday night. Uh, we're looking to add some fireworks at the end of the concert to kick off the weekend. And then um, Saturday we're going to end the festival at 3.30. We're not going to have a Saturday evening band. A lot of people we've seen leave. They're wore out. They leave at 3.30 yeah. and they really don't come back. So uh, we're trying to put a little more into Friday's band versus splitting it between a Friday and Saturday. I know last year maybe a hundred people was there. They just yeah. everybody just dead, yeah, right. especially if it's hot. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you know that time of year it's a it's yeah. a crap shoot. humid. Yeah, and so um, and then we'll have the smaller bands during the event itself on Saturday. So it'll be three bands total with the big band being Friday night. And I know personally, I'll ask you this ever right up till the day before parade mm -hmm. starts at 10. Correct. Correct. So um, pretty much the same situation there. The parade will start at 10 here at City Hall, funnel into the park, and that's where the festival will begin. So. As fast as this stuff goes, Lord, next month we'll be talking about parade lights, Christmas, ice skating. Uh -huh. well, we are putting restrictions on horses. Yes, okay. we are. Yeah, the the beginning of the parade, we're working on um, making that more efficient, more <coughs> in, opening it up for other um, registrants as well. Hope we're trying to get a, a few more floats in the parade, and so we'll have to limit the horses to be able to uh, have space for other types of entries. Have we got a theme yet? Well, since we were going with the fall festival, uh, we didn't we didn't really necessarily think we had to come up with a theme every okay. year, since it was just going to be we rebranded as Laverne's Fall Festival. Now, Parade of Lights, you know, that's still a right. different mm -hmm. kind of thing where we'll come up with a theme for that. And what about a Grand Marshal? We have not chosen one yet, but in the past we've always tried to do the Grand Marshal and the theme together. This will make it easier to find a grand marshal for the fall festival parade, but we have not chosen one yet. Okay. Any questions, guys? No. All right, well, I'll just start over here with Mr. Chuck. Chuck, do you have any comments? No, I don't think so. Well, Ms. Laura? Thank you for everything that you do. We appreciate you. Miss Felicia? Same as Laura. Appreciate everything y'all do. I know Kathy works extremely hard on these specific activities. And Andrew, I know you work really hard with the ball league and with the, keeping the fields. And we do have the best in the state, I think. I'll say it's so a group effort. <laughs> we'll appreciate you. We know y'all all work together. You got a good leader. Mr. Rick? Well, that was kind of my overall feeling is, is uh, that I was getting out of today's meeting is just how smooth everything is going and how well, um, how well things are running um, with the, the big success with the, with the ball league and everything else well planned out. I'm just, um, I'm really happy to be a part of it. Uh, rah, rah. I think it goes without being said that, uh, and we say this every month, we say it all the time, I say it during the, part, the board meetings that our park and recs crew over there, uh, Felicia mentioned everybody, I wanna make sure Sheila gets noticed because without her keeping us up to tabs and <laughs> sending emails and, uh, cause Lord knows I forget 
I want to welcome Rick back. Rick has not been with us for a while. He's kind of had some issues. I'm glad to see Felicia's back. Everybody's looking healthy. Hopefully uh, next month I'd like to see a full quorum. It's getting to where it seems like everybody's, uh, you know, got to work. you got a month ahead to plan. And I, if you miss one once in a while, that's certainly understandable or if you're sick or something. So our next meeting will be May the 15th at 6 p.m. right here at this same bat channel, bat time. With that, I'll call this meeting adjourned.